and we're live. Hello everybody, I'm Ashley Norman and I'm super excited to be here on the Behind the Chair channel. If you don't already know, I recently won a one-shot award at the Behind the Chair show recently in Austin, Texas. So thank you so much for having me on live. Today we're going to be talking about something near and dear to my heart, which is color melting with my favorite product, which is from Schwarzkopf. It's this new line, it's called TBH, which stands for True Beautiful Honest. And I'm gonna be discussing how to color melt using their tone softener. So this is a very special product that is intended to be intermixed with this permanent color line. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on the live, I'm sorry, not the live model today, the non-live model. I'm used to working on my models. So we are gonna be doing a doll head demonstration to show physically how I apply the color mount. But while I'm doing that, I want to discuss different ways to formula to formulate to also shadow roots, tone the highlights, gray blend potentially, and or shift or break the natural base. So let's go ahead and work on my friend here. <laughs> She's just lovely. She's about a natural level, well, natural level, nine, 10. So she is already to the lightest level possible here. If you need a level finder like this, I sell these on my website. We're gonna start with two different formulas today. The first formula for the root area to create a shadow root is going to be equal parts 716 and 606. So that's a level six natural chocolate mixed equal parts to a level seven with an ash chocolate. So these two are really, really pretty together. You have your natural and your chocolate to create a fill because once again, if you're going from a level nine, 10 and dropping down to a six, seven, you need to fill or add some kind of warmth. So that natural chocolate's gonna be the warmth that you're gonna need to add. We are gonna balance that warmth out with a little bit of the ash. So the one six is the perfect balance between ash and warmth. We are going to be mixing that one part six volume to one part tone softener to one part color. So it's a one to one to one mixing ratio. You're mixing together basically a permanent color with a six volume and the tone softener, equal parts, okay? So let's say for example, it was one ounce of color, one ounce of peroxide and one ounce of the tone softener. The secondary formula that we're gonna melt it into fading from dark to light to create an ombre or a gradient graduation of color we are going to be melting that into a level nine. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the level eight and level 10, mix them equal parts to create a level nine. I'm using the 10, five, one and the eight, six, four. So the level 10, five, one is a level 10 gold ash mixed with a level eight chocolate beige. So this chocolate beige is actually one of my favorite colors because it's two parts chocolate to one part beige. That being said, it's also a violet-based color line. So something you should know that's special about TVH that is violet-based. So you don't have to be scared of using the warmer shades in this range because that violet base is in there, it's gonna cut it down and cool it off, okay? So we're melting these two formulas, A into B. Here we have the mix already right here. The level nine was mixed one to one to one as well. I used a 13 volume, slightly higher volume of peroxide. But we're gonna dive really deep into our choices of peroxide in a minute and what the heck tone softener is, right? So before we do that, let's go ahead and get into the application. We have the money piece here separated out from the rest of the head. So we're actually gonna start with using the lighter shade, which is the level nine, in the money piece first. So I'm gonna use this all the way to scalp because I don't wanna root my money piece. Sometimes I root my money piece, but then if I do that, I'll traditionally use three different formulas because I like to have the shadow root at the money piece lighter than the shadow root behind it. Since we're just working with the two formulas today, we're just gonna go right to the scalp with the level nine, okay? So typically, if you're working with an acidic gloss to do a shadow root and tone, you probably would want to apply the hairline last 
because deposit only color processes very quickly. And if you applied at the most porous hairline first, the hairline might take too dark and too muddy or too ashy if you apply too early because it's gonna sink and grab really fast. But tone softener mixed with the TVH is not a true demi-permanent. So the TVH line is an ammoniated permanent color line. It has 50% less ammonia than a traditional permanent color line, but it does have an ammonia content nonetheless. Now, we have learned that permanent color has the power to create lift and deposit. So traditionally, when we're talking about toning hair, we're talking about depositing on that hair. So usually we use a deposit only demi-permanent gloss. Typically a deposit only demi-permanent gloss is acidic. It's like a lip gloss that's gonna live on the outside layer of the cuticle. Can have a tendency to fade a little quicker as well. So why in the heck would I wanna use an ammoniated permanent color to color mount or tone at the shampoo bowl? Well, that's a great question. And this is the question that we're gonna to answer today in a hundred different ways because it is a little confusing and there's a lot of mistakes that can be made with using permanent color at the shampoo bowl instead of a demi. In fact, most artists will tell you not to do that at all. But there is a benefit to it, especially when using tone softener. And that's really what I wanna to get to the nitty gritty from today, not just go over the actual application. So you see me here using perm papers. This is a really old school trick that I learned even when I was doing traditional tint retouches. Let's say for example, you've got wiry grazed hairs that like to stick out of the tint and you wanna stick that hair into the tint so it can actually, actually cover the gray. Perm papers will stick those wiry grazed hairs into the tint to get the full coverage. There's a tip. Also, it keeps it off of the skin. So once you put that perm paper there, you can lift it up and really clean the skin to get great coverage around the face without a lot of staining. This one I found at Cosmoprof. It's called Fiji paper, and it comes with this cool little dispensary, so it's really easy to pull. Okay. So I'm using the perm papers to isolate my level nine formula so that I can maintain a bright money piece around the face without the darker shadow touching down onto it. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start my shadow root. This is on wet towel dry hair. So you are going to be applying on wet hair. Wet hair is a couple of things. Well, for one, the pH of water is typically seven, which is higher than the natural pH of hair, skin, and nails, which is 4.5 to 5.5. So because you're using water with a higher pH than the natural pH of hair, you're already starting to open up the cuticle. So you might think like, why would you do gray blending or gray coverage on hair that is wet? Well, actually, if your hair is shampooed and clean, towel dry, it's actually gonna be more open and easier to create better coverage than if it were dry and dirty. Fun fact. Second thing to keep in mind when it comes to having wet, clean hair versus dry, dirty hair is also that water kind of can attract itself. I think it's called hydrophilic. So it's this concept of like, if you have a sponge and it's very, very dry and you try to get the, super, super dry sponge to absorb something, it's gonna be a little bit hard. If you get the sponge wet ever so slightly and then go to wipe something up, it actually absorbs better, which is kind of interesting. So it's the same concept if you're a makeup artist, for example, if you do your makeup and you use a beauty blender, which is a version of a, of a makeup sponge, you always wet your beauty blender first before you start applying your foundation, don't you? So same concept. So what we're doing is we're doing a traditional quarter section, quartering the head, and then I'm gonna melt using diagonal sections. So first off, I'm really just gonna get the tint applied, and then I'm gonna cross check my application and start melting to create a halo root. So if you notice, I take fairly big sections 
and I use a serrated tint brush. I sell these on my website. And the idea is, is you want to create a swipe swipe. You're not necessarily doing a technical tint retouch because you're not going to the exact line of demarcation. In fact, if you do too technical and you, you will create lines. So our goal here is to melt formula A into formula B. Our goal is not to create a hard line. So it, even in the initial application, before I start the cross check and the melt, I'm still gonna apply using a very feathered application in large sections, okay? So now I'm gonna go into my front quarter here. How's the view on that? Do we need a close up or are we doing okay? Maybe when we get to the melting part portion, we can get a little closer because that's where you really start to see it come together. So you can see now I'm applying that level six and seven right behind the money piece but the money piece is protected because I already have it fully saturated with the level nine, as well as with those perm papers. So that's what was the advantage of me putting that in the hairline first. Also keeping in mind, permanent color has a longer processing time. So I can leave that on a very porous money piece and it's not gonna grab too dark and too ashy too fast. Okay, all right. So now we have our shadow root with its initial application. And now we're gonna go ahead and start melting the two formulas. So this is the part that is a little bit different than working with a demi-permanent gloss. A demi-permanent gloss, you can kind of comb through and then just squirt the secondary color on with the bottle. These two formulas, because they are cream-based, do have to be physically melted one into the other. So the process can be slightly more labor intensive, but there is a benefit to it which I'm gonna explain more as I go. How are we doing? Any questions so far? Yeah, um, definitely got a few questions. Um, Nicole for, on Facebook wants to know if you conditioned the hair too. So you can shampoo and condition. You probably don't really need to because you're still gonna to need to shampoo this off and then you're gonna probably condition after that. So typically what I'm doing these color mounts I'm doing it as the secondary application after doing all of my lightener work. So typically I teach open, I'm sorry, typically I teach foilage techniques, which is open air balayage inside of foil. And I do all of my lightening work first, and then I go back in and melt the highlights. So creating the shadow root and the gloss through the mid lengths and ends. So if I shampoo off all the lightener, then I can go right into my color mount service, shampoo that off, and then go into a condition after that. So great question. You can start to see now how I'm physically melting these two formulas together. So what I did was I started by combing the root area. I flipped the comb so I don't cross contaminate or pull down the dark color too much. And I'm also wiping my hands on a tray that has a towel clipped to it as I go. So you see how now I'm starting to use diagonal forward sections because what I want to do is slowly pivot on a diagonal to create that halo group. So almost like imagining this is the navel of the orange and there's wedges coming off of that. So I want to create this halo of death from the crown area. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a comb, I'm combing in the in the actual tint, so this is the level six and seven tint with the wide tooth of the comb, okay? Now there is tint on this comb. I don't wanna pull it through those level 10 ends. So I'm gonna flip my comb to the clean side and then I'm gonna pull through. So that little comb flip is pretty important to not create spots and transfers. So now you see I'm cross-checking the initial application or feathering down further the level six and seven. Now I'm coming in with that level nine right on top of that formula A, and I'm melting formula A into formula B physically with my two fingers. So I melt these two formulas together with my fingers, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe my glove clean because I'm creating this mid-tone right now by mixing these two formulas together, but I don't wanna pull that mid-tone all the way down through the end. So now I'm gonna take my glove 
and I'm wiping my glove here that's clipped to my tray, to my towel that's clipped to the tray. And now I'm coming back with fresh level nine formula here, okay? So now I'm melting through the fresh level nine. Once I know that's fully saturated, then I can kind of pull through and I know it's not going to pull through the mid-tone, okay? So, all right. Questions before I start explaining why I would use a permanent to do a color melt rather than a traditional demi-permanent gloss. Yes, we do have a few questions. Um, so Edith on Facebook wants to know what color line you're using. So this is the Schwarzkopf TVH True Beautiful Honest. It's a brand new color line from Schwarzkopf and I'm using it mixed with their tone softener. So this is a very special color line. It is a permanent color line. It does have ammonia in it. It has 50% less ammonia than a traditional permanent though. It also is a violet base which is interesting because it means that even the warm colors are going to be cooled off. So think of like either like a stone color or like a gray beige or even like a mushroom. So these, that's the kind of undertone that their browns have. So remember my formulas were actually kind of sounding warm. Like I had the natural chocolate. I had a little ash chocolate in there for the root area mids and ends i had a gold ash as well as a chocolate beige so it sounds like maybe i mixed a pretty warm formula but as you can see it's already oxidizing very mushroomy so you don't have to be scared of going warmer with this product line because that violet undertone really cuts it and i love that because everything that i do now is pastelized blondes and so when i'm doing cool pastelized blondes I'm looking for a color line that is gonna have a cool base. I'm also looking for a color line that's translucent. So translucent means light passes through. Opaque means absorbs light. So I don't want the light to be absorbed over my highlight. So if I'm using a color over highlighted hair, I wanna see a dimensional coverage, highs and lows. So the fact that this permanent color line is a translucent deposit means that I'm not going to have hard opaque lines of demarcation. So that's one of the reasons people don't like to color melt with permanent color because it creates hard lines or bands of tint when the client comes back for the retouch service. And that's the last thing that we want to see. So this product, because it is already going to be a, a more translucent deposit, also too, that tone softener, is going to dilute down the pigment weight as well. So because I'm putting the tone softener intermixed with the permanent color, it's actually diluting down the deposit even make even more. So making it once again even more of a translucent dimensional coverage. Okay. So more questions before I continue explaining? Uh, yes, definitely. So one question we have from Nicole on Facebook is what would you do for clients whose hair tangles easily when it's wet? You want to use something that's going to help detangle it. So you can, like the question earlier was like, should I condition before this? You absolutely can if the hair is super, super tangly. I typically reach for some type of treatment. Um, I know there is a new line from Schwarzkopf treatment out there that is really good. In fact, maybe I'll grab it and show it really quickly. So maybe you can actually treat the hair. As long as you rinse it out really good before you start the color out, you should be okay. That being said, stay here, Chris. I'm just gonna grab the thing. So a treatment that you might want to try from Schwarzkopf, which is kind of their newer technology, is their fiber clinic. This is a tri-bond treatment. So it's gonna rebuild more bonds than just the disulfide bonds. This one's a really good treatment if you want to try this. Um, that being said, because it's an, this is an ammonia permanent color line, it's, it will deposit deeper into the cortex than just a deposit only gloss. So once again, deposit only glosses are like a lip gloss that live on the outside layer of the cuticle and have a tendency to fade quicker. A permanent color line is going to go much deeper into the cortex. So even if you shampoo and condition before you start your color melt, as long as the conditioner is well rinsed, this will still enter deeper into the hair. So you think you're gonna be golden there. Okay, so I do wanna go into a little bit more theory 
about the tone softener and what it does and how it creates this hybrid product that's not really like a true permanent color, but it's not really like a demi-permanent either. It's kind of the best of both worlds. You can shadow root and gloss with it just like a demi-permanent, but you can also do base breaking as well as translucent gray coverage with it at the shampoo bowl. So it's a pretty versatile line that gets a lot of different things done in one step. So I don't know about you, but I don't get a lot of clients that are natural level six and above with no tint or no gray. So if you're shadow rooting a client who is level six and above, no permanent tint, no gray, then it's very easy to gloss with a demi-permanent. But if you have someone where you either, either A, need to create translucent gray coverage at the same time as shadow rooting and glossing, or let's say, for example, you're trying to soften the contrast between the natural base and the highlighted hair. So in that case, you are going to need to use a permanent to do that. But we don't want to create opaque lines of demarcation that are later going to be an issue the next time she comes in. We also don't want to create hot roots or too much exposure of warmth. So those are some of the issues that happen with toning it with permanent. So we're going to have a conversation about why the tone softener makes it this magical hybrid product that you can get all of these things done in one step without having to tint between your highlights or, you know, do a base color and then do a foilage. No one has time for that. I want to just do my foilage and my color melts two steps instead of three. So how do I do that with avoiding creating lines of demarcation, avoiding a hot root, avoiding too much exposure of warmth? Well, that's going to be the tone softener, but I would love to explain why on my post-it note board while my friend here processes her color melt. So that's typically how I do my color melt application. And then I will allow it to sit for a full 20 minutes if I'm doing gray blending. I'll let it sit for 10 minutes if I'm just doing um, more of a base breaker or a simple gloss. So now you can see the two formulas melted and you can really see, look how pretty this level nine is. Once again, this level nine had gold ash and chocolate beige in it. And look how gorgeous it is. You see that violet undertone? It's very beigey. Definitely not gold in an orange kind of way by any means, okay? So we're gonna let her sit for about 20 minutes, process, shampoo, blow dry. I will fully style and take an uh, after photo. I already took a before photo. And I'm gonna have the before and after photo posted after this live so you can really see the full effect on just this doll head. Okay, so while we do that, let's go ahead and start a little theory lecture because it's really hard to explain 100% the technology at the same time as demonstrating. So if there's any questions that might segue into this, let me know. Uh, yes, we do have one uh, theory question. Uh, Star on Facebook wants to know, uh, what would you do if a client has a level three and what's the lightest you can melt into? This is a fabulous question, okay? And this is, these are the kinds of questions that I love because if you've ever been to any of my in-person education, or you've done my online education, you know I will work with level twos with gray in front of a live audience because I'm not afraid of it because I have this secret weapon here, which is, once again, tone softener, okay? So here's our formulas. Here's the level seven and here's the level six. So we had a natural chocolate and an ash chocolate in levels seven and six, mixed one to one to one one part six volume, one part tone softener, one part permanent color. Then we had our mids and ends formula and our hairline formula, which was a level nine. We have the gold ash as well as the chocolate beige, one to one to one with a 13 volume and the tone softener. All right, so let's dive into her question, which is the perfect question to safely into this very top. So we already have written here the formulas that we did. We were talking about having a formula A melting into a formula B to create a shadow root, a graduation of color or a fade from dark root to light. So we have our levels six and seven formula melted into our level nine formula. So the highlighted hair is going to transition from level six and seven into a nine. 
Easy peasy lemon squeezy. We already know that, right? That for sure is a no brainer. Okay, now this is the question that she had. So keep in mind, this strand of hair right here is our highlight, okay? This is the highlighted hair. What if she were a level three, okay? So she's a level three. This represents the base color, the natural base through the mid lengths and ends, okay? So this strand of hair is the natural base that lives between the mid lengths and ends, right? So sometimes people hear the word base, they think on base or the scalp or the roots. I'm not talking about the roots. I'm talking about the natural base color that lives in between the highlights from roots to ends, okay? So her question is this. Here's the level finder. Once again, if you need one of these tools, this is a custom made level finder that I sell on my website. Let's say she is a natural level three. You've highlighted her to a 910, which my friends, if you ever take my education, you see I do this. I will do this in one session, okay? It's possible. Now, if I have this much of a contrast between the natural base and the highlighted hair, it can be a little harsh. It could look black, it could look white. The highlights could end up looking like a gray hair. So we have to do something to soften the contrast between the dark base and the highlighted hair. So we're gonna do something to lift the natural base at the same time as toning the highlights. If you use permanent color at the shampoo bowl to lift the natural base at the same time as toning the highlights, that is called base breaking or base adjusting, okay? The two issues with base breaking and base adjusting is typically A, too much exposure of warmth creating brassiness and or creating a hot root. Okay, so I'm gonna explain to you how you can avoid those two mistakes by one, which is gonna be the application, two, which is by using tone softener, okay? So let's say, for example, we don't change the formula at all. We use exactly the same formula, but all we're gonna do is change maybe the volume of developer. Okay, so what we're trying to do is let's say, for example, we don't necessarily want to shift or lift the natural level three at the scalp, because once again, that's gonna create a hot root. So we have our shadow root that is level six and seven. So we're shadow rooting the highlight to level six and seven, but we don't want it to disturb the natural level three. In which case, I'm going to use the six volume and the tone softener. So what is tone softener? Tone softener is a conditioning agent. It has like shea butter, uh, macadamia oil. There's another, I think argon oil is in it. So it's very conditioning. So it's a conditioning agent. It also has a 4.5 pH. So we know that we need alkalinity to create lift. So ammonia is the alkalinity agent within permanent color that lifts the natural base. If we throw an acidic 4.5 conditioner into an alkaline ammoniated permanent color, what are we doing? We are cutting down the pH, cutting down the power to create lift. So what are you doing? You're taking a permanent color and you're making it a soft lift, less exposure of warmth base break. Using a low volume developer, if you're using a level five and a level six with an acidic conditioner and a six volume, it's probably not gonna lift that level three, at least not visibly to create a hot root or a line of demarcation from when she comes back, okay? So now, what if we do wanna start softening the contrast or lift the natural base through the mid lengths and ends? So once again, we're not trying to change the level three at the roots because we don't want hot roots, but we do want to create a shift or a lift or a fade from darker to lighter or gradients or ombre in the natural base. So now we're taking the level three and we're trying to lift it a level or two. So now the contrast between the highlight and the base is only six to 10 maybe instead of three to 10, you see? Softening the contrast to the natural to formula B, which is our level nine, 
Let's say you want to lift this a couple of levels, maybe it lifts to a five, maybe it lifts to a six, depending on the volume developer. So what are we doing? We're taking a level nine permanent color and we're mixing it one to one to one, once again, with our tone softener, but you're gonna use a higher volume of developer, okay? So if you do one to one to one, but now use 13 volume in Vibrance, or if you use 20 volume in the Agora developers, then you're going to lift the natural level through, through the mid lengths and ends. So it's a base brick that's off scalp. So you're lifting the natural base in between the highlights, mid lengths and ends to create a double blend, a fade from dark to light in both the highlighted hair as well as the natural base. So I do this a lot. If you go on my page, Ashley Norman Hair on Instagram, you're gonna see those darker level models and pay attention. If you zoom in and look closely, you can see that the base color of the mid lengths and ends was lightened. So I'm not just lightening their hair with the bleach in the highlight. I'm lifting their hair by using permanent color and tone softener. Once again, the tone softener is cutting down the ammonia content in your permanent color to create a soft lift, less exposure of warmth, okay? So I hope that answers your question, but I'm gonna take it one step further because what if that natural level three also had gray? Riddle me that, Batman, what would I do? So I actually posted on my Instagram last night a reel of my very recent class I taught last Sunday, I taught a class in Utah where I had a, a natural level two model and she had 25% gray, super, super dense, super, super coarse very hard head of hair to show how to create a lived in blonde. Now I did not want to have to tint between my highlights because when you're doing teasy lights, it's a pain in the butt to tint between teasy lights. So once again, I did my foilage pattern. I taught my, my signature geodesic foilage pattern. After the lightening process, I shampooed it off and then I went into my color mount with TBH to do four things in one step. Shadow root, gloss the highlights, gray blend or translucent gray cover at the same time as shifting or lifting the natural base in between the highlights. It's pretty crazy. You can do a lot of things with this very special product right here. Okay. So what would I change? So remember we stick, we stuck with our same formula. The only thing that we did was we wanted to go on a higher volume of peroxide. So when she didn't have gray, we used the six volume with the tone softener and the TBH. And let's say we wanted to shift this out. Maybe we bumped her up to a 13 volume or a 20 volume. Okay. Now let's pretend for example, that she has anywhere between 75% and below. So typically, if they're above 75%, you might not be able to do this and get the coverage that you want. You might need to do a traditional actual gray coverage application with the TBH with, uh, without the tone softener. Okay, but if you're below 75%, I recommend you still can do a gray blended effect. Now, gray blending is confusing because some people think that gray blending is taking a demi-permanent and using it with a 13 volume. This is true. But if you're doing it with permanent color, which is the TBH, and you're mixing a tone softening, you're gonna get more than just what, let's say, a deposit only gloss with 13 volume would do. So it's more than just gray blending, it's actually translucent gray coverage. Translucent gray coverage means it's still covering it, but the, but the coverage is multi-dimensional. So you're gonna see highs, you're gonna see lows. I love dimensional coverage because it grows out beautifully. So my clients never have a hard lighting demarcation because I'm doing lived in blonde services and then I'm melting them with a dimensional coverage. Okay. So what would I change about this formula had this client had 75% gray or below? The only thing I have to change is the volume of developer because then I just have to open the cuticle layer more. Gray hair has a tendency to be very coarse. Coarse texture means it has a very large diameter as well as many layers of cuticle. So you have to use a higher volume of peroxide. So the only thing I would change about this formula is I would use 20 volume and 20 volume. 20 volume, one to one to one, 
with tone softener and your six and seven to shadow root and gray blend at the same time. Then I would use 20 volume one to one to one with your level nine and tone softener to shift the natural base at the same time as gray blending. This is a very <laughs> technical lecture, so I hope I'm not confusing people. I do have a lot of resources. I have a full tutorial start to finish on a live model on my YouTube channel. So if you go on Ashley Norman YouTube and you look up the Schwarzkopf TBH gray blending, there is a full start to finish tutorial on a live model with before and after, also translated in Spanish at the same time. So if anyone has any other questions before we close, let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, so one question that we had was uh, from Lucy on Facebook asking if you use the tone softener at the backwash on gray hair, do you get 100% coverage? So once again, it's 100% translucent gray coverage, which is different than opaque. So if you're comparing TBH to Agora, then no, it's not gonna be the same coverage because Schwarzkopf Agora is opaque coverage. Opaque means absorb light. It's a difference between wrapping a package in a full wrapper versus wrapping a gift basket in cellophane. So this is gonna be your translucent coverage. Agora is gonna be your opaque coverage. I prefer a translucent dimensional coverage because it grows out softer. So it absolutely works. I have a client that's also saved on the highlights. If you go to my Instagram at the top, there's highlights. One of the highlights says color melt. Same color melt showing on, once again, on a live model with gray coverage up to 75% gray. It is an amazing technique. It will save you a lot of time, especially around the hairline. If you have a bright level 10 money piece with 75% gray hair in between, guess what? Do your highlights, shampoo it off, use your level 10, one part permanent color, one part 20 volume, one part tone softener to cover the gray in between the money piece at the same time as toning the money piece. And guess what? You can use the permanent as a retouch. So they don't even have to get their money piece touch up with bleach every time. You can touch up a money piece with permanent color and tone softener. I'm telling you, it's a beautiful technique. It's going to save you a lot of time. Your clients are going to love it. If there is any more questions, let me know. Otherwise, I think we're getting close to the end of the slide. Yeah, so one more question from Jess. Uh, she wants to know if you have any tips for a beginner in this career since she started Cosmo School last week. Education, education, education. That's all I can say. Become an education junkie. Make sure that you're saving money constantly to continue your education. Or that means you're putting your tips aside or you work with someone who's going to help you with your finances. Obviously, you want to save for your taxes. All those things are important. But please, please, please continue to invest in yourself. That's the one thing that I did for myself in my career that was a total game changer starting when I graduated beauty school in 2005 when I was 19 years old. I went to beauty school in high school and did an ROP cosmetology program. Did I learn that much at cosmetology school? No. Everything I learned was after continuing education from Sassoon to Tony and Guy to Bumble and Bumble to Petra Todd to all of the different academies, to Paris and London and back. It has been a huge investment for me, but now I am an educator and I continue to travel and teach and still continue my education. So actually in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be at the Nicarojo Summit taking some more classes. So please, please, please enjoy this journey. It's an amazing, amazing industry. If you love it, it will love you back, but always remain a student. Awesome. So that's pretty much all the questions we have right now. Um, everyone is really excited in the chat for all the techniques they learned today. So thank you for coming on. Yes, thank you so much. And if anyone has any further questions, they are welcome to direct message me on my Instagram, Ashley Norman Hair. So I hope to see you guys all there.